What's going on? You're here with Nate to Eight, and this is Cross Beats Production. So I want to go a little bit more in depth with this Tokyo Dawn Limiter and uh, just go through it a bit more because I really feel like I didn't do it justice in the previous video. Um, I was more or less just doing an overview or review of the plugin itself. Um, but I want to go through some of the actual, you know, the parts of the plugin and go through it step by step and just explain some of it. Um, there is a lot to this plugin that um, doesn't necessarily meet the eye when you first open it up as well. So, I mean, just like these little tabs you can see here, they create the different images and stuff like that on the the uh, the mix that you're working on. So, um, as you can see, as I explained before previously, this plugin has several different functions. So, one is a clipper, the other is a compressor. Uh, the next part is the high frequency limiter and a peak limiter and then the drive function. So as you can see, you can probably, if you know about this plugin, you, you know you can move these things around so you can move each module around and, and it'll, in you know, whatever order that you're working on or whatever order makes sense to you. Uh, you know, with that, um, what I would recommend, I mean, as far as this plugin is concerned, if you're working on a mix and you've got it to a certain point, maybe about, you know, 80, 90 percent, and you just want to crank the volume of it just to hear if you're, you know, putting a beat out on SoundCloud or wherever it's going, um, this might be something that you might want to look into in regards to that. It's also a fantastic plugin if you're using it for mastering and you're actually a professional mastering engineer, you want to get this plug-in to get your mixes loud. Um, you know, I compare it to other limiters, example, um, Ozone or other limiters that do stuff similar to this plug-in, but this is probably one of the best plugins by far I have found uh, for the value to to uh, what you get for the value of money that you pay for. Um, it, it just, it's such a fantastic plug-in. So, Without further ado, I'll just explain a few things. So basically what I've done with this mix, and again, this is a demo version of this plugin, so I, I can't save it, but I just set it up so I could show you guys kind of how I did it and what I did. Um, I'm going to break down this entire mix in, in the next coming videos that I do as well. Uh, but what I want to do is just go through this plugin to start with and just explain it. So um, first, I, what I did was I set up the clipper so it clipped some of the, the transients that were really peaking in the audio. And the reason why I set the clipper first on this, this plugin itself is because if the compressor has to react to some of the transients coming through, it may, necess may not necessarily be reacting to what I want it to react to. So it might overreact or uh, push the compressor too hard. And that's not kind of the thing that I want to have happening with this particular mix. Um, what I had done already with this mix is I'd really driven it hard into a limiter and uh, actually, sorry, a soft clipper, I should say. And this soft clipper is with the Alicia plugin. So this is a mastering EQ and it has a soft clipper and you can actually drive into it and pretty much push your mix as loud as possible into this soft clipping function here and then you can drive it further with limiting and things like that afterwards. Um, so what I did then after the clipping was pretty much I just obviously like I said I clipped the peaks so the, the compressor wouldn't react to some of those peaks and then I set the compressor so it was just minimally touching the compressor and um, in that process it kind of smoothed out a lot of the transients that were in the mix because this is a very uh, drum or kick heavy I should say kick and snare heavy kind of mix so I needed to make sure it was kind of bringing it to the right level and compressing it correctly so that's the first kind of phase I did with this plugin the next stage then it's got this high frequency limiter and it's really fantastic to um, you know limit some of the high frequencies to level them out in line with the rest of the uh, the mix that you've got going and this is really cool because it's kind of similar to the way I guess a DS might work um, it, it, you know, it has a frequency band, you know, from 5k upward or whatever you want to put it down to further. If you wanted to as well, you can go even further down to 1500. Um, but you know, anywhere up from, you know, 1500 to, I think the maximum is about 18. Um, it can limit the high frequencies. So it kind of similar functioning to a DS or in that regard. Um, it's just more or less for the high frequencies. So I set it at about 5k just to get those frequencies that I wanted and it's on the uh, the ABS and release type so it's on the REL type for the the type of limiting there and I've got it all set to dry so pretty much uh, sorry uh, all set to wet so pretty much all of the limiting is happening it's not letting anything pass that in the high frequency area um, next stage is the peak limiter which obviously is starting to drive the actual signal so you're driving amplitude it's got multiple settings here, so you've got a multi-band, which is a three-band, from what I read in the instructions, it's the three-band um, limiting 
peak limiter there, but it's not just a standard three band. It actually has a really smart algorithm behind it, which helps it, you know, control the peaks. And it actually is a brick wall limiter as well. So you've got this brick wall setting here, and you can change that to one to one times, two times, or three times. And basically, that just controls the way that the brick wall limiter sounds in that regard. Um, obviously, recovery setting you can set that to whatever you want, but I usually set compressors to the BPM of the track and that's exactly what I've done with this limiter as well so I set it to 66 uh, milliseconds to do that. Uh, the other thing is focus so this this dial here basically what that does it focuses in on the transients so basically it allows certain parts of the mix so for example the mid-range uh, transients to come through the mix uh, that's on the plus side so if you or put it on the minus side Basically, it would allow the, the low end and the top end transients to come through. So, I mean, more or less, if you're looking for a more mid, mid-range mid centric kind of mix, then you're probably going to go on the plus side focus, which is exactly what I've done here. And um, it sounded right in my ear. And they recommend, you know, obviously just do this by ear because there's nothing that you're going to be able to see. It's more or less hearing it. And that's why you're doing it, because you want to listen to it and, and it makes it sound better than it was. Um, so final function, like I said in my previous video, this is the drive function. So it's a true peak um, limiting function here. So it's basically allowing it to drive into, uh, I guess, almost like a clipper. And it's clipping the audio. Well, it's not clipping it so much, but it, it is creating a peak, a ceiling that it cannot go past. So you're driving into that as almost you would do with hardware, you know, the analog type of hardware, like with a you know, a console where you could drive your console or if you're just doing other functions with hardware where you can drive the, the audio or the amplitude into it and it creates that drive that you're looking for. It creates some slight amount of distortion. Um, if you don't overdo it, it actually does sound good because the distortion adds to the harmonics of the track and it works well in the mix. So I'll just quickly play this track. I'm going to play a loud section of it. So obviously you just um, turn your monitors down, your headphones down or whatnot, whatever you're listening to so that it doesn't blast your ears out. And I'll just turn it off and then I'll turn it on. And um, actually, no, I'll do it the other way around. So I'll have it on so you guys kind of know what the level is and then I'll turn it off so it shows you how much level it can actually increase into your mix. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. We'll play this beat. And uh, you guys probably heard this beat on the last video. So let's go. Okay, so I'll just quickly bring this to your attention. On the uh, section here for the overdrive, it's got this auto pad. And basically what that does, it allows you to, you know, drive into the, the um, I guess, the ceiling of this and increase the volume. But the auto pad allows it to bring it down to the level that it was at when you were increasing it. So pretty much what it's doing, it's allowing you to level match um, before you actually increase the volume. So you can hear the distortion a lot easier when you have the pad on. And the pad just brings down the volume pretty much. That's all it's doing. Uh, it's bringing down the volume to the exact level that you're in, you know, you originally started at. Uh, so it doesn't it doesn't deceive you basically when you're actually increasing the volume until you take the pad off. Then it will allow the volume to increase. So that's just a handy function to have, uh, especially if you're driving things like this and you want to hear what it's doing rather than be tricked by the increase in volume and um, stuff like that. So. It's got the metering side on it here, which the metering is quite good as well. It's metering in LUFS and uh, that's momentary. You can actually change this to short term as well as in integrated and all that good stuff. Um, it's got True Peak as well, which it's just handy to have that because, you know, you can see if it's actually going over the peak, over the ceiling, and you can set it accordingly for you, your, you know, whatever application you're working on. So, I mean, this is a really, really good plug-in. It's got other things as well. So behind the hood, it's got this little thing here. You can adjust the stereo image, so the width of the drive. You can do this on pretty much all of the actual modules that come in here. And it's just handy to adjust things like that if you need a final adjustment on your limiting side. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Um, if there's other parts of this plugin that you want me to explain, hit me up in the comments. I'm quite happy to answer any questions you've got there down in the comment section below. Um, but I hope this, you know, opens up, a, 
you know, a world of good <laughs> goodness for you guys so you can use this and hopefully work out a mix on your side of things as well. So without further ado, I'll catch you guys on the next one and peace out.